Hello, this is Maya Andreasen, and this tutorial will go over some very basic basics of how to use paint effects. So, um, paint effects are a really great tool to use to create um, foliage in a 3D space. Um, you can create uh, effects in it as well, fire and other things, uh, lightning. Um, you can even create uh, hamburgers that appear to grow. <laughs> um, and you can also make custom brushes as well. Um, it was used, uh, paint effects were used heavily in the first Avatar uh, film to create a lot of the foliage for Pandora. So they can be really very, very effective. So this first tutorial is just basic, basic um, paint effects, how uh, to use some of the pre-made ones and the like. All right, so um, I have a simple scene here. Um, it's just simple lighting, uh, some three simple three-point lighting, and uh, a, a, a hilly environment, I say in quotes, with uh, some water. Okay, so the first thing that I wanna do is show you where to find um, the paint effects menu options. So you have to be in the modeling menu. And if you go to generate here, you'll see there's this double line here, so I'm gonna click it. And if we go halfway down, you'll see there is a paint effects section. So you can't actually select the word paint effects, but everything below it is a paint effects option, which is pretty cool. Um, in order to access the different paint effects or different brushes, you have to go to Windows, General Editors, Content Browser. Now, if you're using Maya 2016 or earlier, you would be going to Windows General Editor Visor. Um, after 2016, they changed the visor to the content browser. The exact same content is in it. They just changed the name. So this is the, the content browser. And these are the paint effects. So this is a paint effects section. Uh, so the first thing I'm actually going to do is make... Um, my land here paintable. So in order to do that, you go to paint effects, you go to windows, generate, paint effects, make paintable. So you just click it. So now that that is clicked, I can paint on the surface of this object. And so I'm going to um, minimize that. All right, and so the next thing I'm going to do is I would like to make some grass. So as you can see, there's a lot of different options here. There's airbrushes, there's animal um, uh, city meshes. You can grow a city really fast. Clouds, electrical, feathers, fibers, fire, flesh. If you want to grow a bunch of body parts, you can. Flowers, um, we'll be making some of those. Glass, galactic, this is pretty cool. Um, different foods and so on and so forth. Fun has cacti um, that you can grow if you're making a whimsical environment. You could make like a brick chimney that kind of looks like a candy cane and so on and so forth. So we are going to go to grass. So everything's in alphabetical order. So these are grasses. So we can make alien grasses. Um, we can make grass clumps, uh, corn silk, cactus grass, cattails. Uh, lichen, jungle grasses, slimy weeds, all sorts of fun things. So we're going to start with um, a couple cattails next to the water. Let's minimize this. So um, when you pick a brush, you will see that you have a little pencil here with a red circle. That is our brush. If we press B as in boy, and then simultaneously left mouse press and drag from right to left, we can make our brush bigger or smaller automatically. Right, so let's make it just a little bit bigger. And then you literally just paint on the surface here. We have some of these in the water. So we're just gonna make all these cattails by the water. All right, so now we've got some cattails. And if you hit Q, that's the select button, which allows you to uh, get out of the brush button. Now, right now, 
you can't really see things very well. So let's go into the attributes of this. So this is stroke cattail. Um, here you can kind of go into the display options. But the meat and potatoes of this is under cattail one tab. So first we have the global scale. So right now it's 0.368, I can make it one. And the brush is literally at one. So it makes this brush a lot bigger. So this, making this bigger, suddenly the proportion of this pond, it's, it's basically a puddle, right? We could put it down to 0.5 and so on and so forth. And then you see over here in the outliner, we have one brush, which is pretty cool. If we wanted to, to render it out, uh, the important thing to remember about uh, paint effects is that you can only render them using Maya software. If you want to render them out using another renderer like RenderMan or Mental Ray or Arnold, you will have to select the stroke and convert it. So you will need to um, modify, convert, and you'll see there's all these options, paint effects to polygons, paint effects to nerves, paint effects to curves. So I usually do paint effects to polygons. And if we were to go into the options box here, you can make it a quad output. Let's reset our settings. So you can make it quad output. Uh, you can increase the poly limit or lessen it and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's take a look at a, a quick render of this and let's just make sure we are in my software right now. We're in Arnold. I'm going to save this before I do the render and it looks like we have them. Let's see if we can't zoom in a little bit more to our cattails, let's get a little closer to them. And render it out again. All right, so as you can see, here are, here are the cattails. All right. And get even closer. And render some more. All right, so um, if I want to make more grass, like other regular grasses, I need to make sure that my UVs are laid out. If you do not lay out your UVs of um, your object that you're going to paint your paint effects on, you can get some really funky effects. So um, your paint effects just might not lay on the object properly. So we're just going to go to the UV editor right now and just kind of make sure all this is laid out properly. Um, I'm going to grab all my UVs. I'm going to go over here to my UV toolkit. That's what I was looking for. And um, just going to unfold a little bit more and shrink it so that it's in the one-to-one -one space. So now my UVs are laid out uh, well. I can go back to my Maya Classic window and I can save. <laughs> save and save often. Make sure to save uh, multiple versions as well. All right. Now, you can see here that some of my cattails have changed a little bit. So some of them are not right at the edge anymore. Because I changed the UVs, that changed how uh, the stroke of the cattails is laid. I'm actually going to get rid of them. So you can delete the strokes very easily as well. All right, so let's go here. And um, I think what I want to do is um, try this rice grass. And we're going to make it bigger. Um, we're going to make it a little bigger. Whoa, that is pretty humongous. Uh, let's make that one and see how that looks. Okay. All right. So if you want to go into the brush and change it manually, you can always double click on the tool settings. Uh, so these are the stroke settings here. Uh, you can also go to the toolbox here for your um, brush. So I just double clicked on the tool and that opens it up. And you can also reset the tool. All right. Let's just make this a bit smaller and get to work. All right. 
So I know that these are huge and I'm going to have to go in here and make them smaller. So I'm going to make a couple different strokes. And then what I'd like to show you all is how you can combine these strokes. So we have two of these very large uh, brush strokes for the rice. Now let's say one of them is at one and this other one is not. You can actually combine strokes of the same brush into one brush. So what you need to do is select both of your brushes or all of your brushes. And we're gonna go back to generate under paint effects and we're gonna choose share one brush. And then as you can see, this brush is now one brush. They're both exactly the same. So I can make them bigger or smaller accordingly. Which is pretty cool. And so now if I wanted to make these uh, uniformly smaller, I can uh, go in here and I can do that. Let's take a point five. And what that does is, is it makes both of these strokes uniformly smaller. All right. Um, let's go to some Bermuda grass and just paint in the rest of this grass. We have kind of two types of grass here. Like I said, you can have multiple, multiple uh, types of um, paint effects and one scene. Now, you need to be careful not go too crazy. The more paint effects you have, uh, the denser it is, the uh, more memory it's going to take up. And as you can see, that's some funkiness here. I suddenly shifted. Let's make sure that doesn't shift. Okay, that's good. So what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to make these one brush as well. All these are going to share one brush. So I'm going to grab the Bermuda grass, uh, go to generate, and share one brush. All right. And so I can now go here, and if I wanted to, I could make it bigger so I could do two. and all of my Bermuda glass got larger, right? Which is pretty cool. I'm gonna go into this and screw it. All right. Um, now, there are other types of um, paint effects that we saw. We saw that there are flowers. Okay, so if we wanted to create some flowers, you know, remember to select your, your object Call this ground. Ooh, let's save. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly it didn't want to work. All right, so we saved really fast because it's starting to act all laggy. Um, uh, and then so we can we can select any types of flowers that we want, and. Uh, you can start painting them. However, I would like to move my environment back to where it went. What is happening here? I apologize, everyone. And it would appear that my environment has decided that it is going to have a delayed result and everything. So we're gonna have to go back to plane here. Uh, and name it ground. So like I said, paint effects can bog things down, but I'm not really sure what's going on right now. I don't think it's the paint effects. I think it's something else. So let's, let's save what we have and we'll go back here and, and we'll try this again. All right, so uh, let's select some flowers and uh, whoa, that's pretty big. I don't want it that big. 
Let's try this. There we go. There's some flowers. Make those a little bit bigger. And we'll just put those in. Make those pretty. They're a little bit large though. Um, we now have definitely a puddle. So um, I'm definitely going to go into my attribute editor here under Dahlia Pink and make these flowers a lot smaller. So now we have some, some pretty pink flowers hidden in the grass. There they are. And if the, once again, if, if you feel that the grass is too um, big, uh, we can go in here and we can make it a little bit smaller. So I could do 1.5 maybe. And that's going to make the grass a little smaller so we can we can see the, the flowers a little bit better. And let's see, let's render this out and see what it looks like. All right, as you can see, we have some, some pretty flowers uh, interspersed with the grass. And I have the feeling if I make it two, I'll still be able to see the dahlias. Let's try it. And voila, there they are. Like I said, you can always make uh, the flowers bigger. For now, their global scale is one. We can do 1.5. And as you can see, they've grown a little bit more. So they'll be a little bit easier to see. All right, let's save what we have. OK, so one other thing I'd like to show you is the um, uh, trees. OK, so we're going to select this. Now, like I said, my, my scene is already getting a little bogged down because of all these paint effects. So there's several different types of trees. There's uh, regular trees, <laughs> and then there's tree meshes. If you choose to use a renderer like RenderMan um, or Arnold or Mental Ray or Octane or something like that, you might want to use the tree mesh option um, because they are using a mesh with a texture um, uh, applied to it. And you can always change that texture so that it's applied to a shader in one of those renderers. So, you know, in RenderMan, you have to use a specific RenderMan shader. In Arnold, you have to use an Arnold shader most of the time for the textures to show up properly in the renderer. Um, and so in order to do that, you want to make sure you have an object that once you convert it to polys, you can apply that specific shader and that specific texture too. All right, so um, let's look at some of these trees that we have. So you can see there's a lot, there's a willow tree. So, um, you know, we have some water here, so we can grow a willow. So now we have a willow tree, it is very small. So I'm going to make it a lot bigger. So let's hit five. And we have a beautiful willow tree. Now, if we wanted to do um, a different tree, we could. So let's go back to the ground here. And what other trees do we have? We have tree bear, leafy trees. We have uh, poplar background trees, pine forests, uh, birch limbs. We have um, some pretty cherry trees as well as birch trees. Um, birch trees that have animation applied to them. So all sorts of fun things, there's bamboo. And let's look at the tree mesh real fast. There we have more standard trees like oaks and maples. We also have some palm trees um, and pine forests and the like. So, you know, decide what you wanna use and, and, go, and go from there. Um, I'm going to, I think I wanna use some standard trees. So we're gonna to go to tree mesh and we're just gonna make um, a couple, uh, we're gonna make an oak oak forest. Um, anything that has like a time, like a clock to it, there's some animation on it. So let's just, so this is like an oak forest, basically. And even though it doesn't look like an oak forest, it is an oak forest. So you can make instantaneously a forest. Let's make it a lot bigger. I'm going to do 10. And if we were to render it out, Oh, 
it would appear as follows. So we're gonna let it render. And there we go. So right now it's a pretty small forest. We would need to make it a lot bigger because right now it just looks like a bunch of bushes. But the cool thing about this is you could use these as bushes, you know? It's like, okay, well, I kind of like how this looks as a bush effect, so that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to go into render settings here, and um, I am going to make our rendering a little bit bigger. Let's make it 1080. Here we go. Now we're cooking some grease. And once it's done, uh, we should see how it looks. And there it is. So now we have this forest. These are all plains. Um, it actually looks like a bunch of bushes, which I actually kind of like. Um, and so I'm just going to keep them like that. All right. Let me save this. I'm going to zoom out. And we'll do one final render so we, we see our scene. Take a look at this. And here we go. So um, paint effects is a really powerful tool um, that really allows you to have a lot of versatility and have a lot of fun. You can make custom paint effects, as I've said before, this tutorial does not go over that. Um, but you can make custom paint effects. Uh, you can also um, convert them to polys. Um, you can apply different shaders to them if you want. You can make paint effects that glow. You can do all sorts of fun things. You can also add animations to paint effects so it looks like you have blowing uh, grass or, or trees that are blowing. And, and so on and so forth. So um, until next time, this is Maya Andreasen. Bye-bye.